got you. Maybe we push it at the same time. I understand. <laughs> okay. I was waiting on you. <laughs> okay, it's seven o'clock. I'd like to call this regular meeting of the Germantown, German Township Trustees to order. Could you rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Heasty, could we have the roll call? Yes, good evening, everyone. Dr. Cross? Here. Mr. Stubbs? Yes, they're here. Sorry. Mr. Potter? Here. We, we, everyone is here tonight. Great. Uh, next, we're going to move to visitor comments. First, we have a, a representative from Trebel. Is it Trebel? Trebel. Yep. Trebel. Uh, Energy Service, Scott Belcaster, is going to talk about electric and uh, natural gas aggregation. And just an update, if you remember, Electric aggregation was voted down by 17 votes and the gas aggregation was voted down by 26 votes at the 2003 general election. So we're still, I <laughs> think, Mr. Bacaster, great to have you here. Thank you. Okay. Did I switch this then to HDMI? What is that? Yep. Okay? yep. You can move that podium if you want, so you can stand up. Yeah, this is wonderful. You can put your laptop on the podium. Mm -hmm. All right. Question is, am I? It looks weird. muted. I can always restart. A volume. Dallas. Do you need to unmute? We're good. I got it. I heard it. Oops, that's good. <laughs> Step on Castro and Big Bell Energy. When it comes to energy aggregation programs, we focus on doing the right thing for your residents. With over 10 years of proven negotiating experience, Treybell has set a new standard in the governmental aggregation process. Utilizing our proprietary RFP process, we have been able to capture the lowest rates available in the market. Our resident first approach assures your community will know energy rates both now and in the future. Our in-house customer support team fields all incoming calls and can help with everything from questions on enrollment to pricing and even how to interpret your energy bills. Trade Bell is committed to educating your residents on aggregation and how to navigate this market. Our energy specialists regularly attend meetings both at the township and city level. This type of engagement allows Trade Bell to align our goals with your community's goals. Even more, the ongoing relationship enables a true partnership that ensures future success. This complete team approach has enabled Trey Bell to be successful with all types of communities. From small townships to larger cities, we can customize a solution that will help your community reach their goals. A recent example of this success is Columbus, Ohio, where Trey Bell created a new website, Clean Energy Columbus, which helped us to deliver a 100% renewable energy deal over the next 13 years. What's more is the new Trade Bell portal, which allows immediate access to all your community's data and information in a single place. Actual usage reports and trends, along with current documentation, is at your fingertips through a secure channel. Whether you're starting a new program or upgrading to a Trade Bell run program, our team of professionals will make the process easy. When you need help navigating this confusing energy market, reach out to Trade Bell. Let us show you that big decisions can be made easy. Craybell Energy, a proven choice. Well, slide number one. So, uh, yeah, Trey Bell, thank you uh, for uh, watching the video. It's something we came up with this year. We wanted to roll that out a little bit more. We were founded in September of 2010 with a primary mission to help clients manage their energy program 
programs in a complex energy market. And uh, I think some of you I saw at the OTA conference, um, as you know, we're, we continue to be a supporter of the OTA. We've been in this magazine, the uh, Township Association magazine for years. You might recognize this ad. But uh, we, we don't plan to go anywhere anytime soon. We're going to continue to, to uh, support the OTA. And, uh, you know, we feel like just townships are, uh, I grew up in a small area, and so it, it hits home for me versus some of the bigger stuff. Now, I did mention that we've done Columbus. Um, we've ventured out um, to do some larger stuff as well. And, uh, you know, our first attempt at that was sort of a home run. I mean, uh, Columbus is like the third largest uh, city that can do aggregation in the United States. So it was, uh, I guess they thought well of us when they hired us. Um, I'll just kind of walk you through some of the things here that we uh, that we do. Uh, what sets us apart? Number one, as you heard in the video, we're community oriented. So what does that really mean? Uh, we try to really listen to what it is you guys need. Um, we try to be supportive of your community when when possible. Um, to give to uh, you know, we'll show you a little bit later in the in the uh, in the um, presentation. We are consultative. Um, we're not here as a salesperson. I think uh, I'm not a sales guy. I'm a I'm a economics finance guy with a, a, an MBA, and so I, I'm a little bit different than your standard. Just get up here and try to make you guys set, buy into something. I think there's a lot of communication that has to go into this program uh, because it is it reflects on all of you. So what your people see is reflects on you, and that's I'm involved, and I have to make sure I get that right. We do have an RFP and RFQ process. It's all proprietary on our on our system. It means that there's no gaming of the system. It all gets done online, and we can, uh, you know, we present the material to you as we get it. Low rates. When you talk about low rates, everybody wants to talk about low rates, and they they're the best or the best. I mean, low rates and having the lowest rate is is important. I will tell you right now, it's not the most important thing by far in this program. But having said that, we've set the lowest rate in the market and numerous utilities already. Like um, when I say set the lowest rate, this is data points. I mean, the, this is the lowest rates that I've been able to find in any aggregation uh, program uh, here in Ohio. Uh, quick and easy access to information, it's all through the portal. You'll have access to this. Uh, I don't know which one of you is always the point person, but it can all. Or you, meaning the trustees and the fiscal officer can have access to it. But it does give you a real insight. You can get answers quickly. All your documents are right there, easy to find, very organized. Reliable customer service team. And I think um, there's some irony in that I put it last because it really should be the very first thing on, on that. Go back to what I just said to you. We go out in the market. I have to use some intelligence to get Time the market, so to speak, a little bit correctly, come up with the right structure and all that to present to you. But at the end of the day, it's really about your customer calls in and says, I want to get, I want to get here. I want in the program, I want out of the program. How do I do it? And it's easy to just say, we're gonna let the supplier do it, but that, you know, have you ever called an 800 number? It's maddening. And there's a lot of things that go on that probably shouldn't. Uh, in the industry, and that's where we get we jump in and help your folks get answers quick. So back to the customer, we speak with a live person. Um, we're probably uh, I think we extended another offer to another individual today, um, Scott Ruffeld. So now we have two Scotts in our office. I call him uh, lovingly Raffy, just to, to mix it up a little bit. But folks can call uh, our our office and get answers quickly. And uh, you will actually speak with someone live. And uh, I can't think of a time ever where someone had to wait more than maybe, you know, two hours to get a call back. So, I mean, it, it happens quickly. Most of the time, one of us in the office picks up. So, um, again, you're getting unbiased consultation. Uh, you're, you know, you need something. Supplier's going to sell you what they're pushing today. Sometimes the you know, customer doesn't want to hear that. You know the angry customer in your township. They happen. They're not here tonight. All I see, well, we'll find out. <laughs> so, but usually you'll have those ten people, right? And we've designed processes to remove them to make the experience better for them and you. 
community involvement. Um, you know, we are the sponsor. We, we do go to the OTA. We try to sponsor your OTA conference. Regional OTA event, uh, events were, I believe, in Montgomery. We've sponsored a number of events here for the regional OTAs. We provide support for activities, festivals. You know, we, we don't just try to uh, sell something and then disappear, which is frequent in our industry, but we do try to get involved. And you can see here the upper pictures where my uh, my wife and I will go to a, um, a Christmas uh, parade, hand out school supplies to the kids, and that. Uh, and then down below, we ended up um, Sugar Creek over there. The Amish country asked us to help towards uh, the purchase of a defibrillator, which saved two lives the very next day. I was super excited to be a part of that process. Talked about competitive low rates. Um, yes, our competitors frequently push towards their favorite vendor and or, you know, they've got uh, uh, an RFP is what they call it. And it really is just them calling in in a couple rates. It's not really our RFP process. I haven't, uh, I think it's like an 18 page uh, RFP. that's compliant with all Ohio law, which means that we've sat down. My counsel and I have sat with the, uh, a number of county prosecutors. So when I deliver something to you, you know it's going to be compliant with all the regulations that Ohio requires within an RFP. It's an important piece and step that uh, we took to make sure we're doing it right. Um, right here, this is uh, down here in the Ohio market, just an example, Ohio Edison. We had a 4.19 rate. We did that, we rolled it out in, um, we rolled that one out over on Columbiana County. Uh, and, and for the record, that's the, I think the second lowest rate in Ohio Edison's aggregation market, and it was only a community about the size of, uh, of German. So frequently people say, you've got to have be a part of some massive process to get good rates. It's not true. There's a part of it where timing is important and, uh, the load factor for your specific township and just being in the right place at the right time. And so you don't need to have massive load. Remember, I've always said to folks, if, you, if you've ever invested in the stock market, if I buy 100 shares of Microsoft today and I wanna buy 100,000 of Microsoft, what do you pay if it's $100 today? $100, you don't get a discount for the next 100 first. It just doesn't work like that. Um, what you do get is suppliers competing for your business. And the more business you can bring, the more generally they're willing to sharpen their pencil. And that's the process really that we bring through through, through Trey Bell. And then the other one was AEP Ohio. We connected, I think it was like eight different communities together. We went to bid, and I believe that was a 4.39. It was the lowest rate we had seen in the market. So again, Rates are going to be important. Uh, I want you guys to understand we're going to do everything we can to get you the best and lowest rate, but it's not the most important part of the process. I don't know um, how any of you feel about renewable energy. Love it, hate it. Um, I'm just letting you know that we are involved in it. We can do it. Um, I've got, uh, um, I don't go outside when I leave and hug your tree, but I will tell you that I do have solar on my home with batteries and the purposes, so I understand it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to know how it works. Um, you know, what's the install look like in a certain day? What, is, uh, what does it mean for the uh, electric to go out and my home keep going? I'll share with you just a quick story. Last summer, we had a uh, tornado rip through our area. We were out of power for six days. And uh, the hardest part was just telling the wife that we couldn't have air conditioning all night. We had to turn it off at some point and just uh, and not do that. Otherwise, the batteries would be dead. But at the end of the day, it really made no difference in our life because batteries were there in solar. So it, it did have some advantages, maybe not always the cheapest thing to have um, sitting at your home, but it is. it did make my life a lot. Uh, it did improve my life. Being without power for six full days was tough. And again, we've talked about the clean energy program here at Columbus, uh, and it was one of the largest, most complex programs. It's just short of 2 billion kilowatt hours a year that we have to manage. <laughs> it's massive. Um, 
you know, this is just a quick, you know, what are the things that set us apart again? Trego is proprietary software and portal to help customers stay informed. That those customers in this case would be you. Um, how their program is performing. We have uh, RFP process and a developer process to make running the program easier for the end customer to participate or not and get the information about their program quickly and easily. Um, you know, energy has become increasingly more uh, technology driven. And so you need to be able to run analysis, create reports and tap into these things. And if any one of you ever called me, I can, in a few strokes of a button, tell you how much money you guys are saving as a community as a whole. You don't have to go to a supplier and figure that all out. We, we hit a button, we know. <laughs> so aggregation programs are becoming increasingly more complex as we've talked about. Um, and uh, we just feel like we've got a really nice program that uh, pulls together technology, customer service, and the whole experience. We do have 160 combined electric and natural gas programs running in Ohio. We continue to be one of the fastest growing companies. Um, in fact, I think we may be one of the second largest at this point. Um, we continue to grow our portfolios we already talked about. We just ran a few different programs in Dark County. Um, we just rolled out Miami Township, as you guys know. We just finished their rate, um, their program uh, last week. They're going to be getting a 6.99 cents per kilowatt hour um, starting, I believe it's in April and ending in June of 25. And so uh, we know that the utilities rate is going to pop up this June, it's going to be horribly painful for residents. And uh, as a result of that, um, the residents of Miami Township are now probably going to pay somewhere around cents a kilowatt hour less than the utility. So there are 10,000 plus households, they're gonna have a tremendous savings. I can just tell you in another community similar to this size I looked at today, they have about a million three that we put back into their community already, right? It does make a difference what you trustees are doing, right? So <laughs> it's important. <laughs> yeah, it's always a little scary, but it does make a difference. Um, so I wanna just, uh, I wanna, close this out from here from the presentation and just uh, what questions might you guys have about the aggregation from a timing standpoint, maybe, or uh, how, how it would, how we would proceed? Thoughts that come to mind? So I think I, I have a question. If we do go to put it on the ballot, yes. Do you guys help out with the process of, of getting it us to get it passed or yes. is that on us to do that? Or how yes. does that work? All of them, yes. So, Trey Bell, we would be hired as your consultant broker, similar to an insurance agent. I have brought with me this evening our energy consulting agreement for you guys to review. It's the same agreement that we passed and had with uh, numerous, I mean, almost every community we have. Um, again, it's been reviewed by countless uh, county prosecutors as well as my counsel. Once we're hired, we have all the legislation created for you, so you don't even have to do that. We'll provide that to you. Um, typically, the township will file it with the Board of Elections. If you want me to do it, it's no problem. We're happy to do it, but it typically, we'll get you the legislation, you'll pass the motions to put it on the ballot, and then submit it. I like to submit it typically a week, week and a half ahead of time, just in case your county prosecutor has a hiccup or something. Just trying to leave some room to anticipate any issue that we might have, right? Um, I believe this year is it gentlemen uh, November 7th is the election, which means I think we have an August 9th deadline, 90 days prior to the election. Sometime early August. Yeah, very, very right in there. So that's what would happen. Now, what I, again, we talk about what sets us apart. Early on in my career, I, I never believed that you just throw these things on the ballot. Now, back when I did this statistically, it was 88% of them all passed. But again, getting them to pass and not putting them on a, or, a, you know, doing any with it is not the point. Now, is it? You want it to pass, but you really kind of want your, your members of your community to be involved, engaged, and understand what they're voting on. And that's where we jumped in and changed the dynamic. We, for 90 days out prior to the election, 
we will take care of it, educating your community. It's, a, it's, you know, with your help, we've got a number of um, mailings, a public meeting that I'll conduct for you. There's a specific reason why the mailings go in the, in the order they do and when they do. Uh, you know, we can use Facebook to get the information out and any other newspapers or other avenues like your own website that you guys feel is important, right? It's, it's, we have to work together to get that info out, but we will do that all at our expense, no expense to you. And then after that, if we get a successful uh, ballot initiative, literally like just right after that, we go into just starting to get, uh, we then have to have by law two public meetings to discuss a plan of operation and governance. We again, take care of all that. I've got it all written. We'll uh, put it in the newspaper for you. I've even got the newspaper <laughs> um, ad written for you. I mean, it's all, it's really quite seamless, but then I'll come out, conduct two, be two meetings for you, and then we'll adopt the plan. Roughly, usually in a November election, it takes a while, uh, you know, getting through the minutia, getting it filed with the PCO. By April, May, we should have a program starting for you in 2024. So, as, as you probably are like, whoa, that's a long ways away. It is. So, you know, getting the process started early is important. Um, being, I guess, orderly so that the residents understand what's happening and why it's happening. And they'll have our, our, our toll free number for them to call. It just, you want it to not seem rushed. And I always say, try to get out ahead of it as early as you can. So do you rec we have very few natural gas customers in the township. <laughs> so do but do you recommend make this guy natural gas? Oh okay. So, Thank you, Mark. So do you recommend putting both of those on the ballot even though natural gas may not? Yeah, so they both always want to go on the ballot at the same time. I don't know. Some, some people are convinced that doing it separately is right but it's never right it's always better to do them together because they're going to they usually pass together or end together so just get it done um but my recommendation to you is it is your call on that i mean if it's typically i've always said if it's under 50 households it's probably not worth it because you get 50 households maybe 55 percent of them join i mean we're already down to you know there i mean is it worth the the, the process and time to do 30 households. I can tell you, we did another township way up north, and they had, I think it was 12 people participating on theirs. And I, and I said, do you guys want to keep doing the gas thing? And they're like, not really. So we, just, I, I filed the appropriate paperwork to shut it down with the PUCO two weeks ago. And uh, I'll be honest, that's the first time I've ever done that. But it just takes a little bit of thought about you know, how many people are being affected in your township. So if it passes and we, we go with you, are people automatically in the program? Do they have to opt in? Do they have to opt out if they want out? Or how does that process work? Yeah. So this is run through a PUCO process. It's called an opt out program. It, uh, all people within the community are, are considered in the program unless they affirmatively opt out. <clears throat> Our programs all come with 100% leave at any time, no cost to you. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's a risk proposition to you as, a, as an individual. Do I want to do this or not? In the old days, they charged $25, $50. And I, when I got into the industry, I said, it's ridiculous. Charge nothing and watch more people join it because now you don't have to worry about paying to get out. And more people joined. And then they were worried that when rates went way down, people would you know, scatter and leave the programs. Suppliers are left holding the bag, never happened. And people like the programs. And so um, everybody would be um, in the program unless you affirmatively opt out. Those customers with a, what was called percentage of income payment plan, they are not in the program. And anyone who has their own contract, those people are excluded, I'll say at the outset. When they, on a personal level, have a contract that expires, they can opt into the program, no problem, all right? And they can go in and out as much as they like. 
you know how that is. It's probably not worth the headache of jumping back and forth, but, but I'm just saying theoretically they can do that. So we have at least two power companies that I know of, DPNL, AES now, yep. and then Butler Rural. Yeah. Um, is there an issue with uh... No issue. Butler Rural would stay, um, customers would stay with Butler Rural. It's a cooperative, they'll stay there. They don't actually, they're not part of the public utilities um, jurisdiction. Anybody in the AES portion will get that. And so okay. again, we know that AES is going up again. It's at 10.93 through June. We already saw some of their auctions come through and they're gonna be high again another year. This is kind of hard to say, but as far as what you're looking at now, how much can the residents save per month? I can just ballpark figure. Yeah, so let's just say- uh, It was today. Yeah, I think it's gonna be, the way it's gonna be coming up is 20 to $40 a month. I think, you know, before it was maybe less, sometimes between five and $15, but the spread has become so large between what we're gonna save people, what the utilities rate is, that it's gonna be a lot larger. It's significant. Yeah, absolutely. But there's no way it could be higher, right? If we go with you, the rate can't be higher than just regular through AE. AES oh, yeah, so let's talk about that. There's, it could be, but I don't mean to scare you, but I'm just saying to you, we're dealing in a market. I already know what the tariff is right now, so I can pretty much tell you we're gonna save them a bunch of money. I know that. But over the long term, say six years from now, maybe at the outset, we've seen this before, at the outset, you start saving people money, and then the new auction comes through or some legislation changes, and it drops the utilities rate down, right? So it could, for a few months, drop under the rate that we're offering residents. But remember, it's zero early termination fee, zero risk. You don't like it, you're out. So it's really, there's really no downside to having something that provides a stable rate to your residents. Right. I'm just gonna tell you, we've had them. I don't, I try to not look at this, um, uh, as a as a all or nothing win, you hope over the long term, like anything, like even being investing in your four hundred one k, over the long term you're winning. You might have a few down months here and there, but it's generally overall, yeah, yeah, overall you're putting money back in people's pockets. Yep. So like the, you just signed with my, uh, Miami Township, you're going for a couple month, a couple years contract usually is what that one in this case long. was a twenty. For, yeah, 26 months contract, that's right. Yep. And the reason we did that, typically, I know it sounds, well, why 26? In their case, we have a lot of programs in other jurisdictions, utility jurisdictions that are lining up with the June 1st change in rates. But AES is already high. So the sooner I can start their program, the sooner the residents save money. So we, we I mean, we, hurried <laughs> fast to get that April start date going so that residents can get the savings. So this is a big question. We have a lot of people with solar panels on their roofs and in their backyards. So will they, if, if they get into this program, will they still get credit for excess energy they produce or is that dependent on the? Dependent on the supplier, but there are very few suppliers, I'll tell you, that will reimburse them. What we find that is a lot of the solar people will go back to the utility as the default rate. Now, there is, you know, those individuals, and I don't know how many there are, but there are many, have them call my office, I'll direct them in the right direction to get, you know, either in a program with the right su supplier that does it, should they, should that supplier not win, or you guys choose to go a different direction? But um, yeah, we can look at that. It's not a big deal. I, don't, I think we always have a way to find a solution. So, okay. Okay. No, okay. I was just saying, how does billing work? Do you guys bill our residents? Because you guys have to make money somehow in this. Yeah, no. So yep. how, how, do you, how do our residents pay? Or how, how do you guys make your money, I guess? Yeah, it's uh, a two, uh, two, two step pro, uh, question. So the first thing is we're like an insurance agent. We get paid from the suppliers. Okay. All right. And it, it, nothing's for free. So it's built right. into yeah. the rate. Um, but at the end of the day, we get paid from the suppliers. No money comes from the township okay. funds, okay? It's important because it, you know, fundamentally there's rules that you have to follow, as you guys know, when you start spending money. Secondly, um, uh, uh, 
lost my train of thought here. What was the second part? On the billing, how's the billing? That's right. I'm trying to tie it back to that. On the billing, it's just for the resident's sake, it's just like they're getting billed today. Okay. The only difference is generation disappears from their line item on their bill, and then the supplier's charges are below. Sometimes we have people say, well, we're getting charged twice. I can assure you, you're not getting charged twice. You have generation, transmission, distribution. Transmission distribution continues to get billed at the utility level. They're in charge of the reliability of the system and keeping things up, but the generation portion disappears. The generation portion is the 10.93 that you're paying today. It's replaced down, you know, in a different part of the bill by the new supplier at the whatever rate that we end up negotiating. Okay. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you pay just pay the utility, the utility pays the supplier. Okay. Yeah. Nothing different. You can still do budget billing, just like you, if you, if you guys want it, if there are customers out there who enjoy uh, a level bill and uh, really no difference in anything that they see, other than this is just a financial transaction. Okay. Yep. So the contract that you have for us to sign, does it involve any fees for us or? No, and it says it right in here. <laughs> yep, as, uh, as I already mentioned, there are new um, township fees in this case, you know, in German, we'll, we, uh, Trayvill will be glad to help raise some of the costs and put it on the ballot for you and pay for that cost. You know, typically there are some people who've tried to do it in the primary. I said, well, we're not going to cover $10,000 to put it on there, but I'll, you know, a couple hundred bucks in the, in the, in the November uh, election, that's fine. Remember, there is, as I've already talked about with the educational process, I, um, there, I asked that we, you know, we were organized, we get through it because we're going to spend money to educate your community. And so at the end of the day, you know, it's important that we, we do it right. We educate people, we get them up to speed and, uh, you know, if they believe that this is the right thing. And I, I think anybody looking at their bill today would agree with what we've done for Miami versus what you're going to pay now. It feels right. So I, I can't imagine anybody would not want this. Backed by a no orderly termination fee, you have no risk. You can leave anytime you want. So, how many Jamaica Road residents probably have natural gas, Mark? Just a well, I think it runs the entire length of Jamaica. It probably comes up about Route Four. So, I mean, I've got a you know, <coughs> meter right along the road down the front. But all my neighbors. What has been the success rate that you've experienced with the? municipalities, townships at the, at the polls? Yeah, so um, that's a tricky question. Generally, I tried. No, I know. Um, historically, we've done exceptionally well because of our process of it, educating the community. Um, aggregation has gone from, I'll just say, being new to everybody from in only 10 years to it's now hit the mature, mature point on the curve. It's starting to level off. Almost everyone's done it. There were a lot of uh, communities out here <laughs> that didn't do it. And in the area, in the AES area, they resisted it forever. And what ended up happening was, you know, AES rate went to 1093. Last November, you saw probably <laughs> 15 different ones and they almost all passed. Right. I think I only saw one that didn't pass out of the 15 that we saw. So it's it's fairly successful. The only place where I also don't see it pass is in Southern Ohio and uh, different type of folk down there. I don't know. It's just, they don't, they don't want anything to do with anything. <laughs> now those 15 or so in this general area in November, you had Miami Township, obviously. Yep. But any of the others? Um, well, I mean, we have the other ones that we've already done, Clay, Jefferson, I can't remember the other one, but um, offhand, but oh, Butler, you know. Okay. So, um, and I don't remember, we did a number of them in Dark, uh, and then Warren County, we did a couple more, but, you know, we've been now to the point where some of our competitors have um, <laughs> made people mad. <laughs> People understand that we've got a good program. They get, you know, probably if you talk to anybody at the OTA, OTA or anything, 
I hope that they speak well of us. Seems like our phone rings a lot more lately. So I think we're doing something right. Do any of you have any questions? I know we had a had a uh, you guys sent a representative here probably six years ago. Sure. But I do think it probably it's time to go ahead and move forward with with something to help out our electric rates. So, yeah. So earlier you said that if we hired you, yes, that's uh, hiring you, but not a doesn't cost us anything. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. right. One of the things that I'll do for you guys, and I just I'll again need your help tonight when I leave. <clears throat> and you may have the access to this information already yourselves, but we we um, we're serious about getting it right um, and taking a lot more control out of the suppliers' hands and into our hands because then we can control what's happening. We bought mapping software. If that's of help to you, maybe we can map some of the streets and figure out how many um, how many uh, how many homes are on each, you know, on that street? I don't know if that's something that we can dig through our mapping software and figure out, but uh, we can look, you know. You can obviously reach out to uh, my help with the natural gas. So. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm getting at. You know, I I know the electric's worth it to do it here. The question is just is the gas piece, you know, in your in your best interest? We could make that decision by early. We have time. August. We have time. Yeah. So I um, can't think of anything else we've, we've, that we've covered, but uh, there's never been a, a, a more um, important time to be trying to implement these programs. And trust me, if we do a program and it works great, we'll report that back to you on, on the savings. And, you know, at any point in time, we can also shut the program down. It, it seems like it's not your thing, but uh, Wall Street Journal just issued um, an article, if you guys look it up about natural gas, they're anticipating rates to be more and more volatile. And that's something I've been trying to tackle for the last three years. I've been watching it, seeing it. If, if, it, if you guys, if you gentlemen would look at this sheet right here, please. Some of the things that I handed out to you today are things that we will go over when we're actually working together. But this sheet here, if you go back to like 2019, please look at 2018. And you can kind of see where rates were anywhere between, you know, 26 cents a CCF, 27, 28, 29, no big deal. So let's go to 2022, 39, 61, 44. Volatility has become like really unbearable for residents. That's why you didn't really do a gas aggregation with Miami Township, correct? Oh, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. We're going to get a fixed rate for them. And, and, and we had to get through the electric. That April start, we're going to be by the time a program starts in April at this point now, May. You're out of the winter season. I mean, let's be honest, it's like 50 degrees. We're out of the winter season. <laughs> um, my opinion confirmed by uh, the weather reports and others. Um, I've always said that the winter shifts has been shifting over the last couple of years. Just something I pick up on as a skier. So, you know, before early December, it got cold late November and now it's moved almost like we're seeing a little bit of cold in mid-December but mostly it goes away and then it hits really hard in January mid-January but it, then it lingers into March so I think we're out of the out of the out of the winter but it, it could still kick in let me just go to the next um the next item let's look at the one that's got a very stable line to it Right here. I've used this graph to show you guys. Yeah, there you go. You can see that tail, how long the tail is and how stable that is. Those are rates back to whatever it says, 2018, I think. So it's uh, very stable. Look at the line once it hits COVID and the mess that we've been seeing since. Look at how much it just dropped in a few weeks. So the top of that graph was somewhere in the 91 cents for CCF for the price of gas. It was trading today at 24, 25. Go to the next graph. This is why, this is what drives people crazy. 
look how I'll look at the ups and downs there that you're seeing. I'm not too worried about what the rates are, just for the record. I just want you to see in one day I can bring rates to you that say 30 cents. And you say, okay, in two weeks, we'll approve a, an agreement. Great. Two weeks later, it's at 70. And then three weeks later, it's back down to 20. We got to get away from that kind of process. It's, so we've, through our agreement here, we've, we've always sharpened our pencils to get this to be a smoother process. Through this agreement, we found a way to, to fix a little bit of that working with you. But um, that kind of volatility is really upsetting people. And again, look no further than this thing and where these settlements are at the end of the month. It's a lot different than it used to be. And the Wall Street Journal article that I read, again, said the exact same thing. We're in for a very long-term, you know, tumultuous process. It's just going to be like that. Do we have to set up like a, a board of advisors or anything, or is that us? The board of advisors are the trustees. So in this case, set up a separate. Yeah, okay. yeah, we're, 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 we're good. Typically what we did in the past, we ran an RFP process. We would show up on a given night and say, here's what the rates are. And we walk through it and we have, you know, time to settle. You know, yeah, we like this. We like that rate. Let's use that supplier. Go to the next day, get an agreement put together, have somebody sign it, you know, or execute it. Or if I, had it kind of clear where, you know, one one supplier is at five, one's at five and a half, one's at six. You know, do you want the one at five? As long as it's someone that we know and we that we worked with, you guys would say, oh, "I'll just bring the agreement here, and I know you're going to probably take that one." Today, because of the volatility, it's become even harder because now we have to sometimes move within hours. <laughs> I mean, I have stuff bid. At noon, and it's off the table. But or pardon me, I have it bid at noon. It's off the table by three o'clock. That's how bad the markets have become. I'm hoping it settles down a little bit, but at the end of the day, I will always feed you guys all the information ahead of time, you know, so that you can have a chance to review it and look things over. Just it's a good practice. <laughs> yep. How often do you go up to bid? All right, so in electric, your program in Ohio can be no less than 12 months, no more than 36 months. It can actually be a six-year program or five-year program, but every three years, we're required to send out new opt-out letters, notifying customers of their right to opt-out. Typically, two, two to three years is a typical deal length. I have bridged some years where I see something happening with like capacity cost or high or something else where I'll bridge the gap for 12 months, but generally they're 12 to 36 months. Natural gas is slightly different. It can be no less than 12 months and no more than 24 months. If it's a four year deal, you have to send out the letter every two years. That's all. So you, if, we, if we end up locking into a price, that price is gonna be good for Whatever that term is. Whatever that term has been preset at. Yep. And then the rate gets renegotiated or rebid. Yes. And it could go up or down either way, depending on the market. Where the market's at. Yep. Now, if so, are you better to stick with a short, shortest term or are you better to go with the longest term? Yeah, it's a trick question. And I appreciate that. <laughs> you almost got me. But I, the uh, the real answer is um, it depends on where you think the market's going, where capacity are, is going, and a couple other you know the economy, how that's working. I mean, there's a I always <laughs> pull together a lot of different things that maybe maybe you guys is that aren't in the energy sector don't understand. It's just as I always tell people they think it's well. I found a rate at six cents. Great. I did, you know, I hear this, oh, I did a three-year deal. Well, did you know rates were plummeting? <laughs> if you look at some of my curves and you thought you were smart, and all of a sudden it was like, you know, rates went down since like 2008, you know, or whatever. So it's like, you just don't know where the rates are. And it, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. The good thing is if we do a, a 24 month deal and rates were to come down further, we, could, we don't have to wait till the end of the program. 
I can contract in the forward market today for what happens in two years. But I, you know, always want to be armed with information before I do that. If it comes down, you'd always opt out. Always opt out. That's right. <laughs> what is the opt out process for the residents? Yep. It's um so if you're somebody you can either typically you can send in there's a little thing at the bottom, a little card, you can just rip it off, pull it out, send it in. The easier way to do it in five minutes is call the supplier and get out. And then if you have problems with both of those avenues, which you typically shouldn't, you call Trey Bell and we'll help you get through it. And for those people who are like, hey government, leave me alone. I never want to be part of this program. We've even Trey Bell has created our own process internally to get people permanently out. They're always welcome to join, but they can get permanently out, out of the program if if they're if they're very boisterous people who just absolutely hate it. So we've just tried to make this easier for you and us on our on our day. So where where are you guys based out of? <laughs> yeah, it's uh we're we're in Mansfield, which is Richland County. And been there a couple of years, uh five, I think. Before that we were in Westerville. Okay. Yeah. Uh we have programs from Columbia County all the way down here in Warren, uh Dark County, Preble. We just picked up uh, a few more in Preble. Last week we have a couple more that wants to do um that called us out of nowhere uh, in Preble. So they're going to go on the November election. Uh, have you talked to, to Jackson? Um, not yet. So, so they border of, us. Would that be, and we us. share the same school district? Yeah. Um, would it be beneficial if we did it at the same time? To I always say yes. If they're considering it, it's easy to, it's easier, you know, information is sent out. And you, it's just easier for people to talk when they're seeing it. So the same community is what we're getting at. Yeah. Absolutely. Same school district. Yeah. It'll be much easier to do that. But we'd be glad to talk to them. We've just been, uh, right now we've, uh, we literally have, like I said, a hundred and some programs we're trying to get renewed in 45 days. Perfect. Yeah. And when it comes time for the election, yep. I assume every resident in the township votes, even if, as an example, they're in Butler Rural Electric. Yes. They still get a vote. Yes. And so Trey Bell has designed uh, a, pro uh, a communication for just that occasion. That's a supplement to our normal stuff. So Miami or Madison Township, Franklin, couple in upper Delaware County that we've done. We do have this <coughs> sharing of utilities areas. Not a big deal. You just got to get, you got to get the messaging across that, you know, even though you're going to stay with Butler rule, you still get a vote, you know, for what happens to the rest of the people. Uh, I'm always of the opinion, if it's not hurting you, why would you vote against it? You know, maybe these people would want it. Some people say I shouldn't be voting for something. I disagree with that always. I feel like you got to leave it in the hands of the people. In this case, as we've already talked about repeatedly, they can leave whenever they want. There's no thing holding them to the program. So having such an option as a community aggregation is a good thing. It's publicly vetted. Um, one of the things that you brought up, if you're that person who gets a door-to-door -door individual or a phone call at your home and you don't understand energy, you're going to sign up for a program that seems good at first. At the end of it, it expires. What does the rate typically do? It goes way up. Every bit of savings that you did over 12 or 24 months is shot in two months. I see it all the time. This is my, my job is to make sure it never, it never expires. It always goes into the next program. And when you do this, we book this in. We're with you only. Nobody else could come in. Trey Bell is your insurance agent, and yes, you would be with Trey Bell as your agent. What supplier you use, we can switch, you know, we do it all the time. You have one supplier for the first 24 months, and maybe a better one comes the next time, we go with them. Whatever is the best rate and overall package for your, I will just tell you. Hang it in with the boat. 
Yes. When we vote yes, it's yes as long as Trebell is in it. Because we've already signed their contract. If Trebell, so my contract is a five year contract. At the end of five years, if you gentlemen feel I've done a horrible job, you can fire me and uh, just trying to be able to ask questions. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, I'm being as transparent That's right. as I can. So, uh, you know, you can fire us and choose a different person to help you. So, but we're, as far as the community, we're still voted that in. Yeah, oh, I get what you're getting at. Aggregation is what we call evergreen, so it's forever, unless you put it back on a ballot to take it out. Remember, it is the power of the people. They get a vote on it, which say is sort of final on that. But yeah, voting that aggregation does not, I think what Lou is trying to say is if, if the vote is passed, that the, the vote does not tie us to trade bill. It does for five years. Only for five years, yeah, not for forever. I'm trying to I'm trying to delineate the difference between Trey Bell and what you're voting on. You're voting on the concept of, of aggregation. Of aggregation. Not, which, not which is who we're going with. Yeah, which is okay. evergreen. This is two separate okay. issues. So okay. then there's Trey Bell's agreement with the township, and then there's the supplier agreement with the township. Okay. All right. And all we're trying to do is help guide you through that process. Okay. That's good. So one, I got one last question. So if we sign the contract, five-year contract, we put it on the ballot and it fails. It's happened before. So what we do is we will offer to you guys, you know, first of all, what happened, <laughs> you know, uh, and I will always have to ask some questions like, you guys want to look at doing it again? Do you feel that you want to take it back out to the ballot? I'll make a decision if it, if it fails horribly and I find out that, um, you guys are at odds with your people, and maybe we'll have a conversation about exiting the agreement. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, so then I'd be like, look, I don't maybe think we want to be in this again. You guys have a lot of friction going on. This is hypothetical for anybody listening. <laughs> it is just something that happens from time to time. We see it, and we've had a few that have failed a couple times, but um, usually it's just a relationship issue between. Or a trash issue. <laughs> if you've ever done a single trash carrier, you know how much that upsets people. But there would be no penalty to the township in the event that it would fail. Right. I'm not going to come back and ask for anything from you. Even it's just I'm out my money, and even I even though you spent some money. Yeah, I'm out a bunch of you know thousands of dollars, and we'll have to rethink what went wrong. You know, was the messaging not right? Was it you know did we not hit the right people? Did was there a little group that was you know out against it. You just, you just got to figure out what happened. That's all. You never okay. know what it is. But I can tell you that in 2003, I think what you mentioned, Mr. Uh, Trustee Cross mentioned that earlier, that it failed. And so uh, you got to find out why and what happened. You know, it's not, and then, and then we try to figure out how to make it right. And 2003 was a different set of people than it is today. So I'm, I'm hopeful that so is the utility prices. So I think I think we're in a much better position. This is this is making the news. I think you already mentioned it. I did find an article on Miami Township in the news. This isn't something like the old days where it was no one even knew what it was. Today I feel it in my pocketbook and I'm seeing it in the news. I'm much I have a much better feeling about it getting passed this time. It is. So if you leave the contract with us, is it something we should run past our legal counsel or you're welcome to? Absolutely. We would. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You have that though in a digital format. No, I just want you to fax it old school wise. Fax? What is a fax? What is a fax? Yes, I will send you a copy of that in is the, is the same as Miami Townships. Yes. Okay. We have the same. Legal counsel. Legal counsel. Yeah. They have outside counsel. All they do, don't they? Because yeah. they're home. Rule. They don't use prosecutor. Um, and also, could you send the digital of the PowerPoint? Uh, is that available? Yes. I'll give it to you. That'd be great. All right. Because that was nice and be nice, nice to have that in the files. Yeah. Is it something that we'll be keeping here or subject to? Oh, I'm not going could, to could, could, we, sure could we link that to our webpage once we start putting this on the ballot so people can yes. go and watch I mean, that? Yeah, I've never had anybody ask for, <laughs> for something like that. So you'll have to excuse me. 
cutoff card. I just think that would give them a basic idea of what's going on and who you guys are. Yeah. yeah. And that more fuzzy feeling. Absolutely. It's fine. So basically, I think game plan wise, we will look at the contract and discuss this probably at our next meeting. Okay. We do have several months. And yeah. But, it, but the sooner the better is. Yeah. Parts. If it, you know, like, you know, I want to keep the momentum there. We would get disapproved hopefully at the next meeting. Your council can talk to me directly. If it's something more deeper issues that I don't either prove or understand, I'll kick it to my council, let her look at it. But generally speaking, if you guys approve it to the next one, I'm going to shoot over the agreements that you need to put uh, aggregation on the ballot. You can send those out for them. But I will definitely then at that point put a tickler on my calendar to make sure that we follow up and get it done, you know, no later than probably late June, early July. Yeah. Thanks for the time, everyone. Thanks for coming Thank out. Thank, Thank you. I'm all the way from Mansfield. That's a long drive. Yes. Uh, last last week, I did over 15 hours in the car back and forth. Do you need a dinner suggestion? Or uh, no, I'm, I'm a road warrior. And, uh, okay. you know, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm trying to keep it, keep it under control. Thank you. Thank you, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, Mark, do you have any update on the JED? Do you want to come up? I do up? have an update on the JED. So, um, give us your name and I'm up here. So, I'm up here so people can hear it online. I have found out that when the people are talking from the audience, it's sometimes very difficult for people online to hear. So, uh, even though Christmas has passed, I'm feeling like it is the season of miracles. Um, we actually did manage to have a meeting at the beginning of January. Um, so, interestingly, even though I thought everybody had confirmed yes or no, then one person that I thought confirmed yes said, I can't make it that night. So, how, fortunately, had Todd Cunningham, who's the new member from Farmersville, we swore him in before the meeting. So then we had remember so we had a quorum for the meeting so was the superintendent who was who was not there uh the two people from valley view schools neither one of them so um long story short we established a regular meeting schedule so we're going to be meeting the second wednesday of each month through june so uh, at another I've, I've got a meeting with them uh this coming wednesday this being advertised at all? Uh, they have through Germantown. I need to email um, Mr. Easton to pop it out tomorrow. If you're going to be around, that would sure. be great. And I'll send it to you as well. Um, Germantown has advertised it, and I will make sure that the news has it. Um, we did. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, we established our meeting schedule. So through June, and then we'll have a. Uh, we're going to switch to quarterly once we're because we should have everything pretty well done. There should be no, uh, no real business every month. So then we'll go to a September meeting and a December meeting. And then in December, we'll reestablish a regular meeting schedule for 2024. Um, so we passed the resolution to open the bank account. So I've got that paperwork done and sitting at the bank. So they're supposed to send that out. I actually was expecting it today. So that we can all docu sign it and actually have an account open. So we've got, um, oh, geez, forty two hundred dollars in there, and we'll be putting another eight or so. Um, so because we're actually going to have Kelly from Farmersville do um, use the app for First National in Germantown. So once the account is fully open, everybody's signature cards, then she and I are going to go to the bank, and she'll get a tutorial on how to use the app, and we'll process his other checks that she has from Valley View and. So the bad news is, is that um, you remember the JET agreement had a clause in there that the entities were going to contribute $15,000 for startup costs. Uh, so we'll probably pass the resolution asking the entities to contribute. So that's going to be uh, our share, German Township share will be $5,250. That um, So you guys can pass that then discuss it for next month. And I think that's 
uh, Mr. Stiver is getting quotes for insurance. So, lawyer costs. Is lawyer costs. She is supposed to email me what she's got accrued so far, and then I'm going to extrapolate that out for the rest of the year. I'm trying to put together a budget based on the very limited information that I have, yeah. <laughs> as well as putting together a format uh, that hopefully will meet the requirements for state auditor. So as far as income and disbursement go. So, but yeah, I have my hands full. Any other questions? And I would like to thank uh, the royal members of the public that did show up. <laughs> the other two of you? Yes. So, so you're going to get us something for our contribution? Yes. Yeah. And then we'll put it on the meeting. Correct. Yeah. Future yep. meeting. Okay. Have you heard anything about the subcontractors in the building of the school? I know nothing about the subcontractors other than we have only, we got a check for, and don't hold me to these numbers, roughly $200 from Conger um, and for the withholding, and then another 125 or 30 from one of the other contractors out there. Yeah. Because <laughs> so, they have basically nobody out there doing much of anything. So. Well, last year you talked, they hadn't even they hadn't even picked a subcontractor. As far as I know, yeah, and I'm not involved in I, any. I, 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 I heard anything. That's all that's been collected. Roll it in, isn't yeah. It? So now from the school, we're getting four grand a month. But Congress been out there off and on. Yeah, but they've only got a couple people out. Well, now, but yeah, but we only started the collection as of October 27th. So yeah, just two months. Is that little? Oh, yeah. thanks, Mark. So yeah, I think that's, that's it. it. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You bet. Anybody else? Abigail? <laughs> I had that. Um, so, as far as the aggregation, I mean, I was pretty impressed with Trey Bell. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the fact that we really don't have any risk as far as money. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the fact that they can save, we can save. Right away with uh, electrical costs for our residents, it's definitely big. Um, they've been around. I mean, they came here several years ago. I, they're at the OTA every year with the booth, um, so I, I think they're pretty well respected. He, he had a, a very informative presentation and was able to answer all our questions. So I think there's very little, if any, risk at all, um, and potentially. Pretty good benefits from going with the uh, going with them. Well, there's no downside there. You always yeah. opt out. Yeah, and if, if residents aren't happy with it, they can they can opt out, and it, it doesn't change what they're what they're what they're paying now. So it's going to get it passed. And yeah, well, that's the thing. You know, it, 2003 was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. so, of course. It wasn't, it wasn't probably a big difference in rate between what BPNL was charging and what right other companies could have done. So now there's a huge difference. I think just getting the information out there, um, the facts, and letting people know the benefits yeah. of it. I, they, the ease them, of opting out, yeah. I think, is a big thing. People feel that, oh my God, we're going to have to. I've got a question actually for Jeremy. Is there natural gas running 725? Yeah, from the from uh, bottom of the hill. Well, from the intersection of Astoria Road 725, all the way up the hill, all the way to Rolling Farm. So there's several people along 725 that have tapped it, and then there's a couple people on or one person on Conservancy, other than Rolling Farms that this tapped. Okay, I, I thought I remember. Discussion is about yeah. That right happened right switch over right after we installed the underground tank. That yeah. came through. So we had a significant amount of money in the tank and installation, and we yeah. just to get some use out of that before we just. So, and I guess I guess the point of my question and this answer is is that there's maybe more natural gas in the township than what we're thinking initially. I think it worth their while to do natural. 
I mean, I don't know if, if like where I'm at, if it runs down lower. And, you know, See, at some point it's got to go to like the Berman town and hilltop and everything. The other thing that, that didn't get brought up, but I just thought about it. Was that natural gas line that goes from. Astoria to Roland Farms is not owned by Becker. A subcontractor buys, installed that, buys the gas from Vectron, and sells it to Roland Farms. I think because if you go down and read the plaque that's on that meter, meter there, you went through Astoria Road, you probably run into it. Um, it's not Vectron that owns it, so I don't know how that would work. I don't know if they're covered under PUCO or whatever Vectron mm -hmm. is, you know, it might just be a private company that buys gas and sells it on yeah. the, in their own pipe somewhere. Yeah, they all they do is they front the money to, well, I think World Farms fronted the money to put the pipe in, but mm -hmm. they knew they were going to save enough over LP gas that, that it was a while. Because so I, I wonder, like, you know, Jamaica, if it goes lower, but also going for that. For a while, so you've got wind dancer and all that. If they've got gas, no, they do, they not, do not. They do. But, um, yeah, so I don't know how that would affect the aggregation side. It's not what Ross pointed out. We have plenty of time to figure yeah. it out. So once he sends you the digital copy of the contract, you send that out to us. We can take a look at it. If you're ready to make a decision about who to use as our consultant for this, we can go ahead and send it on to the Prosecutor also. So I think it's going to the right prosecutor's there. office right yeah. away. I mean, I know that you we've heard from at least one other company and maybe others. I'm sure there are others out there. But if you're ready now to go with Rainbow, then I think we should move forward that way. Well, I was very impressed with them. And like I said, they've been around. I've seen, I've seen them. I've seen their booth. They've been here twice at least now. So, um, I'm comfortable for with going forward with trade ballot. Okay. When I get the digital version, it'll go to you all of you plus prosecutors. Okay. And hopefully by next meeting we have enough information. And we'll see if they even have a resolution to accept that they can give us rather than us having to create it. But I think he said clay, right? Clay should be with the prosecutor's office. Yes, I believe clay right. is. I believe so. Okay. Uh, I think it's time to move on. So, Mark, could we have the fiscal officer's report? It's my time. Good evening again, everyone. Okay. Um, first of all, I've given you the minutes from January 9th. Are there any corrections? I found that. But I have a motion to accept. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from January 9th, 2023, as presented. I'll second. Any discussion of the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. I've also given you the January financial reports. As typical, you have the fund status at the end of January. You have the year to date. Cash summary by fund. I've not given you the month because that would be identical to the year of date. Now you also have the January receipts and the January payments. There are really no unusual transactions that are that I um, paid or received in January. But I did want to point out that I have transferred, as you approved last month, uh, two different um, transfers between funds. First one is the $4,000 that went from the general fund to the road and bridge fund. And that is an estimate of what the maintenance costs will be for the township cemeteries in 2023. I also transferred $34,900 from the general fund. And that went $14,900 to the gasoline tax fund, $4,500 to the trash fund, $15,500 to the police fund. You approved those three transfers in order to strengthen the fund balances of the recipient funds. 
And with that, are there any questions about the financials? Hearing none, could I have a motion to approve the financial reports and authorize the payment of January bills? And whoever makes the motion can read the details. I'd like a motion to approve the January financial reports and authorize the payment of January bills, warrants 50629 through 50654 and vouchers 1 through 102, the payroll direct deposit, tax withholdings, and other electronic payments. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion of the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. I've completed the 2022 annual financial report and have submitted the financial statements and the footnotes to the Ohio Auditor of State. A notice of the availability to review the annual report here at the Township Hall will be published not this Thursday, but next Thursday, February. No, it will be this Thursday, I'm sorry, February 16th in the Germantown Press. Um, the financial statements may also be viewed on the Auditor of State's website. And here is how we, you can look at them online if you're interested. First of all, you go to the Auditor's website and then click on the Hinkle System Financial Reporting on the Local Government drop-down tab. And then on the side menu on the next screen, we then click on Hinkle System Completed Filing. And then on the next screen, you would click Township on the data by entry type and basis of accounting, and there'll be a drop down tab that you'll do that. And then you'll click Regulatory for 2022. And a spreadsheet will open with several tabs that contains the filed financials of all Ohio townships. And you just need to scroll down on each tab to find our township. So if you really are interested, you can do it online that way. It's a little bit of trouble, or you can just call me and make an appointment and I will let you uh, review the paper copies here, which is probably a whole lot easier for everybody. I've also requested that the township's 2022 transactions get posted on the Ohio Checkbook website. And once that occurs, the easiest way to view those transactions will, will be by using the hyperlink that we have on the township's website. Um, I sent to the Montgomery County Auditor the township's 2023 certificate of total amount of all sources available. The auditor uses that report to prepare the township's 2023 official certificate of estimated resources. I've also provided updated elected official information to the League of Women Voters for their 2023 Directory of Public Officials. And today I received a third request for updated information about the public officials uh, from the county, which I'll be sending to them later this week. Okay, following last month's meeting, I sent, I took the pool levy renewal legislation up to the Board of Elections. And they had an issue with the resolution that you passed in January to place the issue on the May ballot. And they requested that the trustees approve an amended resolution tonight containing an additional statement. So I've given you that amended resolution, which includes a new whereas statement, which is the very first one in the amended resolution. And once you approve that tonight, uh, I will then get that to the Board of Elections tomorrow because they are meeting tomorrow afternoon to certify all the ballot issues. And since Dr. Cross introduced the original resolution last month, and Mr. Stubbs, you seconded that introduction, I would ask that both of you take on these same roles for, roles for this amended resolution. And it'll continue, it'll have the same number, 202309, but just be an amended of that. Yeah, I'd like to introduce resolution 2023-09, amended 213-23, uh, to adopt the following amended resolution, which was originally adopted the ninth day of February, January 2023. I can read the whole thing. We'll just read the uh, new, new part of it. Whereas the Board of Trustees of German Township, Montgomery County, 
have determined that the amount of taxes which may be raised within the 10 mil limitation will be insufficient to provide an adequate amount for the necessary requirements for the operation of the community swimming pool and et cetera. Second. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion of amended resolution 2023-09? The good news is that the Board of Elections agreed to accept what I originally gave them as our official filing so that we did get on the ballot in May uh, because the deadline to submit that was February 1st. But they've agreed if I get it to them tomorrow, it'll then get certified and we'll be fine. There's no other discussion. I'll call the roll, Dr. Cross. Yes. Mr. Stubbs. Yes. Mr. Potter. Yes. Thank you very much. Resolution amended, resolution 2023-09 is adopted. Moving on, I want to correct a misstatement I made last month at the January meeting. When we were discussing the possible prepayment of the Valley View Water and Sewer District loan, I incorrectly stated that the loan interest rate at First National Bank of Germantown is 1%. Actually, the correct rate is 2%. Now, I don't think that really changes your, any of your opinions because we are certainly earning far in excess of that, currently over 4% at Star Ohio on our money. So still a good idea not to do that. Yes. Okay. Um, in January, you agreed that you wanted to put the cell power rent, rent payment this year uh, into the police district fund rather than the general fund. And to make that decision official, I gave you some language. I think we should introduce a resolution concerning that, and we'll make that resolution 2023-13. I'll introduce resolution 2023-13, a resolution directing the fiscal officer to deposit the $18,000 cell tower rent when received uh, in 2023 to the police district fund. I'll second that. Any discussion of resolution 2023-13? Hearing none, I'll call the roll. Dr. Cross? Yes. Mr. Stubbs? Yes. Mr. Potter? Yes. Thank you very much. Resolution 2023-13 is adopted. Okay. Uh, uh, I received just last week a notice from the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation that they are going to be auditing the township's 2021 records sometime this year. The audit date has not been scheduled. When I do get that date, I will let you know. And the last item I have, the city of Germantown has requested that you approve an appointment of Jim, Jim Williams to the open seat on the pool oversight committee. And as you know, both city council and the trustees are required to appoint oversight committee at large members. And we can use a motion to make that appointment. All right, I'll make a motion. I want to make a motion to, uh, elect, to elect to appoint Jim Williams as pool oversight committee for um, the end of 2025. I think one? I think it's a three year it's term. Three year yes. term to end of yes. 2025. I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion of the motion? So this was the one that was posted by the city of Germantown, but did not include Germantown ship residents. Um, even though German Township residents should have been allowed to uh, be on this board. So I, I think I disagree with the process, not we, not from us, from them, um, because they made it seem like you had to be in the city of Germantown resident for at least a year um, inside the uh, incorporated city uh, to be eligible to be on this board. And that is not the case. So I think disappointment in the process, I don't know. Mr. Williams at all. I have no idea who that is. I know him well. He's he's on the park board. Also. Okay. He's a good, a good asset. Okay. And I think Mark has already yeah. talked to the city about the process. First yeah, of all, clear. I, I know Jim Williams very well. I've known him for years. He's a great guy. Yes. Hard worker, committed to the community. Sure. Um, one of my best lions. 
Um, but yes, I have expressed my displeasure to, to the city as to how they did this. And I said from this point forward, when we when they advertise for any oversight committee at large member, it needs to say it can say whatever it wants about the city, but in the unincorporated area, there's no residency um, tenure requirement. And it should definitely say you can live in the township and still be appointed. So, and if we need to help share the cost of that ad, I think that's well worth doing just to make sure that it isn't because it just looks terrible. The, the optics of it were terrible. And Kelly agreed. So we'll get that next time around. Any more discussion of the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. With that, I'm done. Okay. Uh, Police Department report, Keith. Uh, first of all, thank you all for supporting resolution 2023-17. The only other thing I have to report is we are having our shredded dump it day on Saturday, May 6th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And I hope that everybody will bring your credible materials to shred. That concludes my report. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> yeah, the road department department report too. Uh, pretty short report to today. Uh, Mr. Heastie and I had some conversation. Apparently, he had been informed, or he had found out that we had been paying property taxes on two pieces of property that we purchased for the Eckhart Road curb realignment. And after we're doing some investigation and talking to the auditor's office. Uh, apparently, we needed to submit an exemption application to be exempt from the property tax. So, um, I went ahead and executed that application and submitted it to the auditor's office. And from my reading, it looks like there might be a three year look back. So, they might be able to reimburse us our tax payments that we've been making for the last three years. But um, no guarantees on that yet. So um, I'll wait till they approve that. I hear back from them and I will start the process to see what it's going to take to see if or when we can get that money back. Um, only other couple things uh, cleaned up some trees that blow down from the big windstorm we had the other day. Um, luckily, we didn't get called out, but we did have. Quite a bit of trash along the road and a couple of trees that were hung up in other trees that were leaning over the road that we took care of. Um, worked on an erosion problem on Love Twin Road along Twin Creek, trying to widen up the edge of the bank so that there's enough room for uh, traffic to get off the road in case of emergency. And salted the roads during those couple slick conditions we had back uh, at the beginning of the month. I have. Thanks for working on the tax bills too. So, no, no problem. Zoning department report. Uh, mine is short as well. We only had one permit in January, and it was for an in-ground pool on Little Forest Drive. Um, in other news, it's not related to zoning per, per se, but I've talked to a. I, and I mentioned this to Mark. I've been talking to a um, something called Archive Social um, about possibly using their services to archive the township social media sites for retention. Um, I, I have a, a, another Google Zoom meet with them tomorrow where I'll have more information that I can probably bring to you guys at the next meeting. Um, but there's there's concern over public comments, which I'm looking into. People go down there and delete public comments, and then we get a request for something that we don't no longer have access to, stuff like that. So I, uh, I should have more interested or more more information if that is something that you guys think that we should possibly pursue, but I can bring that to the next meeting. I got a couple things zoning just to the zoning department received a complaint about a house on our street that had a quite extensive damage to the roof due to a large limb falling on roof. After sending a letter, so basically we sent a letter to the owner. I talked to the Germantown fire department concerning deeming the structure defective. Ronnie Saul called me back regarding the question if the Germantown Fire Department can deem a structure defective, referring to the house on Art Street. She stated the fire department doesn't have anything 
like a form to deem a property structurally defective. This would seem to make enforcing the ORC 50586, which is removal or repair of an insecure, insecure structures difficult, which we're not going to get into repairing those anyway, but there really is no way either the Board of Health has to say it's, you know, non-habitable or it has to be deemed by the fire department to be structurally defective. So either of those way, and again, but you know, as a township, we kind of decide we cannot afford to get that work done and hopefully put on their tax bill and get reimbursed. But it was interesting to me that the, even the town, the fire department can't say that it's defective. There's no, there's no mechanism to do that, even if you wanted to do that. The zoning department has received two complaints concerning the use of the barn on Diamond Row Road for business purposes. Basically, we're waiting for some uh, written complaint forms for the people that, that, that made the complaint, and there are some, some photos of the violations that we haven't supposedly got yet. She said we dropped them off, but we don't know where, so we're working those. So basically, we're just going to send him, uh, the owner a, a notice of violation that he can't run his business out of that barn. So, so, um, the zoning department have has can have concerns about several properties in the township not following the proper zoning permit and driveway permit through the road department and the Montgomery County Engineer's Office application process. It was decided to send friendly remi reminder letters that a zoning permit is required for basically any non-farm construction in the township. Uh, and also, if they, they're going to put a, a driveway and they need a drive, driveway permit and access permit from the from the county engineer's office, and they need to speak to the road department to see what's going on. And all those those permits from the engineer's office are free, so there's not there's nothing that could hold them back. The biggest, and, and again, I talked to Jeremy and Scott and, and Shauna, people need to realize that they need to get these zoning permits. It's, it's, it's you know, to protect the, the residents of the township and it's the, you know, the, the process they need to go through. I don't know why some of the people don't, but, uh, I want to pay the, the fees or they think they can do anything they want. But I, I think it's, you know, at least in these, these cases, we'll send them a friend letter and we may, may get into the process uh, with the, the, the uh, prosecutor's office if we need to go farther and see what they say. But again, it's, it's something that I think has happened too much in the past. I think we need to you know, try to make everybody try to play. I don't know what you guys think, but. But at least it's a start. I think. Send some letters if you see something. These are all cases where it looks like they're going to be building on that property, or they've kind of one case where they're on, it looks like they're going to start building on the property, but there's been nothing that has been submitted to the zoning department for any type of zoning. So for the letters, we'll get them. And it's not you know, it's supposed to be you know a slap on the hand. It's more of an information sort of thing. You need to do this, you know, to to let go through the, uh, especially with the, with the driveways and the access points, because that could affect our roads detrimentally. So, um, two candidates for the open alternate alternate position were interviewed for the alternate position of the zoning commission. We're interviewed on two, six and two, seven by myself and zoning commission president, Kurt Jacoby. I consider both excellent candidates, but one had, uh, re resided longer in the township and made, had had some zoning experience. So I'd like to make a motion to appoint Tricia Taylor as an alternate member of the Zoning Commission, the term of 23, well, it'll be actually 213, 2023 to 1231, 2027. Okay, so I'm trying to standardize the appointment process by having them submit a, a resume to me and then getting them in for a live interview and making that decision. And could we take it on the, well, let's, uh, could I have a second? <laughs> I'll second. Any discussion on the motion? Okay. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So could we take down the pop-up that's on the web page? It still pops up as far as the open all. That one that pops up, I thought was. Mine won't do it now. But check into it. Let me just look and see. That is the pop-up. It's our meeting tonight. It's the pop up. Last time I checked, the pop there were the, the pop up for the open position was still there. But anyway, so <laughs> how, how long ago did you last week? The pop up on the zoning page is there. Yeah. 
I don't believe there is. I think it's probably now we have the pop up. Okay, no, it's gone. That's, that's tonight's good. meeting is the pop up okay. when I just refreshed the website. That's all I have for zoning. Thanks, Shauna. Yeah. Uh, trustee reports, Mr. Potter. All right, I got a few things tonight. Uh, as far as the, the road, Jeremy was down on Little Twin, or um, if that was at a slip there that's getting relatively close to the road. It was only about two feet off the blacktop, probably. Um, so Jeremy went down there and, and Scott, and they pulled the concrete up and made a berm and did the best they could with what they got. And uh, I've missed Jeremy a couple of times, talked to Scott some, but uh, possibly putting more concrete down there up the hill a little bit more to try to keep that water pushed away. I know we're limited because of, uh, of the regulations. Uh, regulations, there you go. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's definitely an issue and it's going to be continued to be an issue in the future. Um, second thing, um, the city called, uh, wanted me to have a meeting with them. I uh, went down and just to kind of introduce myself as a, on the pool board uh, with, the, with the pool, uh, with Jason, Judy, and uh, Ronnie Soul and Devin Stoutenborough to discuss the workings of the pool, short staff, short of help, concessions, lifeguards, all that stuff that Jacob sure is aware of. Um, I, I contacted trustee uh, Ryan Holmes uh, at Jackson Town Township Talked to him about the possibilities of, of sharing their lifeguards and their help. Um, so they are running the same problems. They're actually having to close their pool some uh, because they don't have enough help. So I reached out to him and um, just uh, swap stories and see what we could come up with. Um, two new um, oversight committee, or I'm sorry, two move two pool. Committee, Rachel Albertson, Alberts, and Sherry Holweger are uh, on the pool board now, a good through 2025. Um, I'm going to meet with Jason Gentry from the city, look at the new pumping filter system they just installed. I, the best I think, from my understanding, it's about $160,000, uh, paid over the three years. Uh, we're into the second year. This will be the second year for that. Is that correct? Correct. correct. And uh, so, and now Jason with the city, uh, how they're part of their way of trying to get paid is Jason is logging his hours. But from my understanding, they might have less hours with the new pumping system that they got. They don't have to work on it so much. Right, right. That was... so hopefully, that'll, that'll cost on one side and save on the other. So, so that was it with the pool board. Now we also had a park board meeting. It was a re reorg meeting. Uh, chairperson Tom Heatline it was is um, chairperson. Vice chair is William Heaston. Uh, Will Parsons come to the city, and Tom Whitting uh, came to the presentation of the Dora, which is the map that I sent everybody out. Uh, the Dora is basically where they can public can walk inside the Dora with open container uh, of alcohol purchased in the three places that's inside the Dora, which is Laughs, uh, Florentine, and Don's as of right now. Uh, it does include why we was involved. It does include Veterans Park. So it was voted on and it was passed. Um, so they'll be working toward that, putting signs up and going that direction. Second thing on there is uh, the paving of a couple parking lots at Kircher Park. Sent out a, got an estimate of $27,000 and a $23,000. Um, wanted to know if we wanted to, if, if uh, the city council oversight committee would approve something like that coming out of, out of the park budget, which, is a lot. Uh, Pat Shively has projected a seventy thousand plus additional forty eight thousand that we can anticipate reimbursement from a CDDB grant to pay one of these lots. This has all been 
uh, again, our $47,000 that we have at the township keeps coming up. Um, so that's will be have to be discussed at uh, some time for point of time. I'm going to see if maybe the city could pay for both lots or we pay for one lot this year. See, we get both lots done. We pay for one this year and, and then we reimburse the city for next year to break it up a little bit in our budget. So what what actually lots are they talking about? It's the it's the so the ones closest to the they call it an upper and lower lot on the on the yeah on the south side. South side, okay, where the new soccer fields are. No, no, that'd be the other side. It'd be the on east side of Curdy on the last story. On the east side of Curdy, just south of. Oh, okay, yeah, there's a Curdy Okay, yep. Yeah. So this, well, see, they I attended. Well, you you were at the the uh, the council meeting Monday. Yes. And they talked somewhat about this as far as in the work session. Yes. And they they weren't sure how much money actually was left over from last year. As far as Ronnie Saul said, it could be anywhere from. Thirty to seventy-five thousand dollars, but they really didn't have a. Either, so I don't know how they can decide. They're not deciding. They're, they're just they're, they're talking just about it. Up. Um, what I was mainly bringing up is they are going to be asking. My feeling is they're going to be asking about the township for money coming at forty-seven thousand dollars. That's what I'm bringing up. So um, again, I, I as a suggestion possibly. Is that the school or the township or the city want some of that money so that we can do some this year and then reimburse them next year to try to push in the blow a little bit? I don't seems, know if that's possible. It's just something to that think about. Yeah, there seems like they're really hard after that money. They're hard after the money. They, they and we just about it every time. We just, uh, do they know we don't spend it? I, I know. Okay. Yes, so, I know that. Um, they want to spend it. They want to spend it, sure. Yeah, and that's where this. I'm never. I'm not going to go I, I down. Understand. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, the person pushing for the money. There wasn't any mention about that grant that the council so. Yeah, I don't know about that. That just got that in this email. So but hopefully yeah, that will take some weight off folks. We just uh, we just gave them what ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. Yes. And now they for a special project. For a special project. So which is what it's for. Which is what it's for, but they can't come to us with a special project every every time they want to do anything. So, I'm just yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yep. Do you have a question? Name and address. Oh, I'm sorry, Dead Cross Seven Four 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 South Diver. So the forty seven thousand dollars that you anticipate that they're going to ask for, which they probably will, because it seems to be the current. I'm going. Um, isn't that for? Emergency situations. Yes, it is. Okay, so is that an? That that's. I guess the way they look at it, we're the only ones saying it's a for an emergency situation. That that's what they're saying. They in their eyes, we're just holding it. We're also the financially responsible of the two. I understand. <laughs> so we've had a lot of storms lately, a lot of wind damage, if trees come down and stuff in those parts. Is that something that might be also? You know the money that that can be used for and another reason to hold some of it back oh we hold up like like we do for the yes there is a little projects there's some flooding on the on there it's already in the works it's already been approved to be worked on um i think there's like five little areas of flooding that uh, then ambergy was the city he's already got a plan they're already or it's already in the works to get that water off of the off of the um trail now i was also there was a grant i don't know if anybody knew about the ninety thousand dollar grant that was given to the city that the city give back did not use because it was actually going to cost us about a hundred thousand dollars to use the ninety thousand dollar grant and the only thing they could use it on was on the on the bike trail but you can't raise the bike trail not even one inch due to the floodplain so it would have to be ground down and then filled back up. And it's just not that bad to justify uh, the city spending $100,000 to get $90,000 of free money. 
So, so we they let that money go back. I, I think the, the the parks needs to stay within their budget. I mean, they're kind of reaching out to get money from somewhere else. Mr. Potter and I had a chance to talk about this a little bit earlier. This is a parks board issue that they want that money. We've not heard anything official from the city. Council has not ever asked for that money. So, well, they have, they, they've not uncomfortable with individuals on the parks board trying to pull the money from us, the 47,000 or some portion of it. Well, I'm just Judy sent a, in an email to Tom saying this that the that the city of what the city's amount of money was and that the township still had forty seven thousand dollars. So she she sent that to Tom so that he was aware of that. I don't see where Judy uh, yes. No, I don't see where Judy mentioned our forty seven. Well, she, she I see Tom asking her about that. Tom Gagline. And then she might have responded then. And she responded because she asked me how much was in it. Yes, she and I responded. Gave her that information. Yep. But I, I, this I, whole I issue is driven primarily by one individual. That's on correct. Parks board. And he, he is more than welcome because it's the same person every single time. He is more than welcome to come to a meeting and discuss it with us at any time. I understand. Um, and I would encourage it. I guess he he he's always after this money, um, which doesn't make any sense when we have the uh, we help we hold it back for a purpose in case there's an emergency or we fail levy or whatever. Um, to to run that account dry to run that down is just quite honestly stupid. Yes. Yep. So I'm just um, I'm just warning I, everybody. I, I, yeah, just appreciate messenger. it. It's not you. <laughs> yeah, messenger. But yep. I I think. You know, we need to be fiscally responsible. I think holding on to that money in emergencies or in case of, in not, if a levy doesn't pass, I think you know, it should be well, involved. I'm trying to come up with a way of, of still getting the parking lots done without having to use the money. Right. If they can, the city can front us that money, and I don't know if that's even possible. And then they read the park board reimburse them next year. Right. Out of the new budget. So I'm willing to bring that up to them. Uh, last thing is uh, something on the MMI. Um, I guess the city is having a uh, um, newsletter, for lack of better words, come out, mm -hmm. and a part of the MMI will be on that also. Um, we had a lady, her name is Stephanie Estes. Mm -hmm. She was um, the director of Camp Miami and lived there. Uh, in the building from 1981 to 2002. Um, Ms. Estes presently writing a book about the land and will be working with the committee to provide such assistance as possible in the days ahead. So that's a good asset to us. Um, talk to John Longworth today. Uh, he is planning on pouring the concrete in the next couple of weeks as soon as weather around the, around the flagpole. We'll get that done and it'll be pushing forward. And that concludes my thank you, Mr. Potter. Yep. <laughs> Can I get a copy of your to help me with the minutes? Oh, yep. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Stokes. First, thank you, Lou, for all your hard work because <laughs> dealing with the, them isn't the easiest. But thank you for all your work at the MMI too, and getting that taken care of. Um, and actually, we were talking about you tonight at our cemetery board meeting because you've offered to help tear down the I'm building, truck down, and tear the building. Down. Yeah, so I've so. been talking to Mark about that. So it's the dumpster in there. He's got it for 10 days. And yep. I'll take it down there and tear the building down. All right. Well, we greatly appreciate you, your willingness to, to help out for sure. So thank you for putting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. I think you're underappreciated by the city. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do. I think you are very appreciated. underappreciated. You do a great job. So I just wanted to make sure I you should have elected him a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. yes. <A> amen. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, as <laughs> moving right. All right. <laughs> so the trap. All right. <laughs> WRCG, we're 
Why? Well, I'm this sorry. Is, this is an election year. Oh yeah, You're yeah. Starting this campaign earlier. Yeah. Um, WRCG, I sent an email today. We need to meet here this month. So I saw your response, Mr. Heaston, that you're unavailable next week. Um, is it, do you think it's imperative that you're there? Or? To you. I mean, I just know we need to get moving quickly. Uh, I, I've talked to Ryan and, uh, a month or so ago, and we just need to get this process moving because our Rumpke contract, uh, expires this summer. So I thought we had another renewal. You know, years. we're out of renewals. I don't remember at that meeting. No, I, I think, yeah, it has I think we have one more renewal. I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I'll, I'll pull the paperwork because I was, it was my first year on the board, and it was a 10 year total with the initial four plus two, three year extensions. I'm pretty sure it's up because I looked a month or so ago, I, but I'll look again. Well, if there is, that would probably be good. So me? If, if there is another extension available on that, that would probably be really helpful at the, at the no, time. I, I thought it went, we were going out to 27. Okay. So we have to um, okay. have a renewal, but I was thinking I'll, I'll look it up and I'll send, I'll send an email. On okay. It. Appreciate it very much. Uh, cemetery. Um, we're working through the hiring process. We've narrowed it down to a couple candidates. Uh, and we are having a special meeting this Thursday um, to re-interview a couple. Um, while I was at the Ohio, I'll, I'll talk about the OTA in a minute, but while I was at the Ohio Township Association Conference, uh, one of the classes I went to on cemeteries uh, was about grants you can apply for. Um, uh, the, the one they were talking about specifically is $2,500, which isn't a whole lot, but um, you can use it only for non-day-to-day -day activities. So uh, that becomes available in July. But the more useful part of the uh, the class I was in, uh, there's an Ohio Cemetery Association, which we didn't know about, which is actually just in center, but it's headquartered in Centerville. So as of tonight, we the first your first year membership is free. So we signed up for that tonight. We sent the facts in from, from the meeting um, and then it's $95 a year after that, so we're hoping for educational um, opportunities, especially bringing somebody new in here in the next month. Um, the, they'll have resources available to help out with with just the operation of the cemetery. So uh, that was definitely helpful. Um, the, just uh, getting the information and getting the information to Mark and the cemetery. It looks good. Uh, we have Brit Tree Company coming in here. Uh, when when they can get on the we can get on their schedule and they're going to take down a couple more trees that are are in pretty bad shape. So I attended the OTA conference in Columbus. I uh, stayed a couple nights at the hotel downtown, um, and uh, it was a good conference. Lots of good classes and getting to talk to people from other townships across the state of Ohio uh, who have similar um, similar problems, I guess, that we have and just talking to people and networking that way uh, was helpful. So uh, lastly, I got an email from uh, the Honorable Tom Young that uh, he is hosting a luncheon on this Thursday. He, however, thought I was the president of the Board of Trustees, so I'm not sure why. Um, anyway, I accepted, but if you'd like to go, it's this Thursday. When and where? At Bullwinkle's. In Miamisburg, eleven thirty to one. Yeah, it's got to. If you want to go, you can go. If you don't want to go, I'll go. But I, we both won't. We both. No, won't. we both don't need to go. Right. That is totally up to you. I mean, I can make it. Uh, but if you want to, it's kind of interesting because you have the other, you know, like so the Chris it, Schneider's there. So they invited the the board of. The uh, presidents of the board of trustees and the mayors, right? The, and they do that, and this is the third one they've had. Okay, so yeah, so so it's up to you. I don't care. Well, we'll decide. Okay. By the end of the meeting, how's that? That's fine. Uh, so who's going? I don't care. <laughs> who's the president? <laughs> if you want to go, go. Okay. go. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Send my regards. You're going on. I'll go. Yeah. 
Uh, and, that, so, and that concludes my remarks. Sorry. I was I got an email from the legislative aide. I don't know why. Yeah, usually they, they, they usually send that to me. Maybe I did and I just haven't looked to see it. All right. My report, I attended the senior oversight committee meeting on 1-12-23. The highlights were overall the senior center is, is continuing to do well. The Monday meal program is serving 50 plus seniors per week. There are currently 153 paid members, 21 of those are out of town. Volunteers and sponsorships are up and a second Friday breakfast has been added. So now they have a breakfast the second and fourth Fridays of the month. Uh, rentals of the building still needs to improve. Basically, community and city events are being scheduled. However, most of these events don't most of these events don't pay for the use of the building. So, if if the city has a meeting over there, they don't get any anything, which would be kind of nice. The historical society when they do give a donation, I think we make a donation for the historical society. Right. So that's good. The um, Lions will be having a pancake breakfast there on February twenty fifth. Okay. Well, so. Uh, Income tax prep, prep occurred at the senior center February 6th through February 10th. The senior center will have a full page ad in the city's second quarter newsletter coming up. The biggest news, which I was surprised was not introduced at the Germantown Council meeting, was that Nelda Lane Judy named the senior center as a beneficiary on two life insurance policies. The center will receive approximately $300,000. Did you hear anything about that? Well, I know that she had passed and I know that she left Various organizations okay. funds. She so, was she and her late husband Bob Judy right. donated the land where the senior center now sits. So anyway, yeah, uh, Shauna didn't think that any of the there were any restrictions on their use of the money. So, but I advised her uh, that the funds be placed in the Star Ohio account to get some better interest. We're talking about that much money. So I don't know how much money. Three hundred thousand dollars. So it was a good, good chunk of money. I'm not sure that. Whether the city has access to Star Ohio. Yeah. So I, I said to, but, to check with the city or yeah. check with you. So again, is that what? Anyway, okay. I'll try to anyway now. Yeah. I attended the 2 6 2023 Germantown Council regular meeting and work session. The highlights were during the Citizens Forum, Tim Johnson acted as a spokesperson for several Hickory Point residents and asked Council to consider a three way stop at Hickory Point and Oak Ridge Court. Not sure where exactly that is. In an attempt to deter drivers cutting through Hickory Point, no action was taken by the board. The DORA status was updated. The resolution to enact the DORA will be brought up in April. The DORA will operate from Thursday through Sunday, 4 to 10 p.m. Um, encompass 29 acres, which we've seen on the map, which I was kind of surprised. But, um, they didn't discuss any cost to the city as far as signage or the extra uh, patrols. The mayor made another presentation concerning the Miami Military Institute, and basically it was the same presentation that we did a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. The road paving for 2023 was discussed. Major projects include some paving around ice, and Astoria Road will be paved from 725 to the bridge. Several other smaller projects may occur depending on excess funds available, and that's what we talked about, the, the excess funds, but they didn't really um, decide on how much was available. So. A representative from Palmer Energy, the firm uh, selected by the Miami Valley Communications Council, spoke about electric and, aggreg and gas aggregation. But he said that basically the savings per resident per year would be about $30, $40. That's why I asked the, the uh, trade bill. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. $30 or $40 per year, it's really not worth getting into it. But Miami Valley uh, Communications Council is representing several communities. And, so that's why they're but I honestly I wasn't very impressed with the uh, the speaker from Okay, anyway, finally I attended the 2023 OTA conference. We'll decide next year if I want to take a year off. It was okay, but um it gets redundant. It gets because <laughs> several a lot of the zoning zoning classes are the same every year. So um we also the the uh, big meeting they talked about basically emergencies in the township and whether we should have a spokesperson. So you went to the two, these other two classes. So, and I talked to chief, do we need to designate a person as a smoke spokesperson? So it's basically, if an emergency happens, they're, they're suggesting that you have a plan in place and have somebody that's knowledgeable of the situation and a friendly face 
um, to be. Look at that face. Yeah. <laughs> so it's something we we can discuss further, but uh, in the event there is an issue that the news basically it's saying if the news media comes, uh, getting information out that's factual and, and um, appropriate at, at the, in a timely fashion. And I tell you that both myself and Sergeant Birch are have taken training for public information officer. So it would probably be best if we had numerous people. That way, if someone's not available or someone else can step up or that would be my suggestion. Not just say you're it, you know, one person that have maybe uh two or three that just be to the I mean, do we need to uh, appoint those people tonight? I mean well I th I don't think it's an official I think it's just a plan to have we make well, depending on what the emergency is too. Yeah, if it's a road emergency, you don't want me getting up there and talk because that, that guy can talk about roads all day long because that's what he does. And if it's something on behalf of the entire township, it should be Dr. Cross as the president of the trustees. So it just depends on the situation. Yeah. Sounds like we got a plan. <laughs> I like that. I'll be at a, a limited play. I mean, we got a play. Um, if it's roads, it's hit Mark or Jeremy and it's safety, it's the police. Township, it's Mark. <laughs> um, <laughs> that part. Do we need to decide as far as using the ARPA funds for the uh, paving of the parking lot? Is we, we, we need to get bids for that again? Or? I think we want to have Mr. Holberg go out for bids. Yes. Okay. And then you'll approve it as an ARPA fund if you want to pay for it that way. Or it can come out of that general fund. Those are your two options, pretty much. Well, certainly the ARPA fund. The ARPA. But you're going to need to do something with the ARPA money. Is that something we want to do now, or is that a summer project we were thinking? Do you... Well, we need to go out for bid. We had to say yeah. it earlier, the better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so anytime. So anytime. So do we? Can we recommend that you get a bid on the? Yes. So discuss it next week. Next week. Uh, any other questions from the visitors? Appreciate you guys coming in. <laughs> All right, that's the end of my report. Any old business? Yeah, quick thing. Uh, I forgot to bring up in my report. Um, I did get a proposal from Strouser Construction Incorporated. They're the ones that did our uh, Cape Seal and our subdivisions the year before last. Um, last year we had initially planned on uh, doing some work in wind dancer starry night drive and um, ran out of time and it just it didn't work out from the contractor standpoint and from our standpoint um, so i did go out and get an identical proposal do the exact same work which what it was was they were going if you remember Three, four years ago, we chip sealed um, the main drive, Wind Dancer Drive, up to the intersection of Starry Night. Um, it's starting to really crack up bad. That whole area is just looking really pretty gnarly. Um, but what they're going to do is uh, micro mix that section that's been chip sealed and chip seal the rest of the subdivision and micro mix it. So it would. Um, from Starry Night Drive intersection out both ways on Starry Night, both cul-de-sacs, and uh, Wind Dancer Drive from Starry Night into the cul-de-sac um, would all be chip sealed and cape sealed afterwards with black mat material. Um, the price did go up approximately 5,500 bucks from last year. Um, the total price, um, which is under that uh, ODOT 101G contract, it covers that uh, ODOT work uh, was eighty five thousand nine seventy five fifty, so eighty five thousand nine hundred seventy five dollars and fifty cents to 
do all that work with them um, starry night in Wind Dancer Drive. So um, if you go back in there and look, it's the shape of the road is still good, but the surface is shot. Um, it's one of those things I think if we keep letting it go, keep letting it go, you can't afford to pave it. So we gotta do something to try to keep that water infiltration to a minimum. So um maybe my suggestion would be that we don't have to make any record any um, action on it tonight if you don't want to, but it was put in the budget as that one of our projects to pay for. Um, I think we have approximately three hundred and some thousand budgeted to do contracted road work. That was one of the each I felt no better for that. Well, I don't see any reason to wait. Yeah, I mean, I, we run the risk of price going up if we wait more than 30 days. So, I mean, it's a budget item. To yeah, I, that's budget. the thing is, you know, it was in the budget under uh, road construction. So, but I wanted to get the board's approval before I signed any anything. Do we need to make a motion to so it's in the budget? It don't have to be in resolution. Even if it's in the budget? I think so. I mean, every year we do a resolution for road work. I would know you budget every year for road work. If you're going to do it by resolution, I would put in there that um, you could give me the authority to sign on behalf of the board. Make that 2023-14. I'd like to introduce resolution 2023-14 to Micromix and Seal Coat, Starry Night and Wind Dancer Drive and Bed of Eastings. With under the 101G contract, ODOT 101G contract with Strauser Construction Incorporated. 101 is it G? G. As in girl. Yes. And the amount of 95,000. 85,000. 85,000. I'll come up with a language in a minute. <laughs> Is there a second to resolution 2023-14? Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? Okay, I'll call the roll, Dr. Cross. Yes. Mr. Stubbs. Yes. Mr. Potter. Yes. Resolution 2023-14 is adopted. Thank you. I apologize for not doing it there, my report. Uh, Any other old business, new business? If not, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Um, All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned at 9.02, according to my...